Hey ladies, I'm sitting here with Bible in hand and uh, looking forward to sharing these times with you. It's just such a unique um, time that we're in, but I, I'm excited about the opportunity just to share God's word and um, find the hope that we know is in Jesus. And so I'm sitting here with my cup of tea and uh, thinking how blessed we are. Um, even in hard, hard times, we still have so much. And um, I'm praising God for those blessings. Uh, so I have this opportunity to share with you twice a week. Um, and I thought, what a great thing to travel with Jesus through these days toward the cross and ultimately his resurrection. And I was preparing those things when all of a sudden I saw online that Pastor Todd's messages are leading up to the cross. And I thought, uh-oh, now what? Um, but you know what? I talked to him about it and he goes, go ahead, it's fine, it's okay. He's gonna be in Luke and um, we're gonna be in John. And so um, I'm really excited about walking through this with you. So I hope that you grab your Bible, or your Bible app um, and just walk with Jesus with me through the days leading up to the cross and the resurrection. So um, we're walking with Jesus in some very dark days, um, but you know what? We're gonna come out in the light. And I feel like it's sort of a metaphor for uh, what we're going through right now with this virus. Um, these are some dark days, but ladies, we will come out of it. We'll come out into the light one of these days. So grab your Bible, open up to John 13. But I love to look back at chapter 12 because we're always supposed to couch the scripture in um, the context. And so we look back at chapter 12 uh, to set the scene and we see Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. And it tells us in chapter 12 that there were so many people seeing this resurrection that it caused many to believe in Jesus. And then I think it's quite comical in a way um, that in 12 verse 10, it says that the chief priests were making plans to kill both Jesus, which I'd always known that they wanted to kill him, but in verse 10 it says they also wanted to kill Lazarus like that would erase what Jesus had done in resurrecting him so I thought that was just really just um, a bad plan on their behalf thinking that if they killed Lazarus it would undo the testimony of what Jesus had done when he raised him from the dead um, but some of the chief priests that saw all this, um, they believed in Jesus, they believed because of what they saw, but they wouldn't admit it. And here is the verse that just, for me, spoke volumes about these chief priests. It says that they loved human praise more than praise from God. They believed, but they wouldn't admit it because they were afraid they were gonna get kicked out of the synagogue. And so the praise of men trumped the praise from God. Ladies, I pray that that won't be us, that we will be willing to stand and admit our belief in Jesus. So that preceded the chapter that we're in, John 13. And we're gonna meet people along the way on this journey we're gonna meet an amazing woman. I can't wait to get to that part. Um, so now we're in John chapter 13, and certainly this isn't an exhaustive study, but hopefully it's an encouraging one where we pull the highlights out 
from these chapters. So we see uh, in this climate of unbelief and truly a wanting to capture Jesus, wanted to, wanting to kill him, um, we see in this climate Jesus retreating with his disciples to celebrate the Passover. And uh, if you know what the Passover is about, um, it's an amazing time thousands of years before um, where the people of Israel were living in Egypt and they were enslaved to the Pharaoh, but God was going to free them. And he was giving the Pharaoh many, many tests and many trials to uh, try to get him to let the people of Israel go. The very last one, uh, they were to take the blood of a lamb and put this blood on the doorposts of their house. And that night, God would send an angel through the camp and um, the firstborn would be killed if the blood was not on the doorpost. And so the angel would pass over that house if the blood was there. And all these years later, the Jews are still celebrating this Passover time when God redeemed their firstborn. And so they're here celebrating this Passover with Jesus. And we remember that verse that says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so here the disciples are sitting with Jesus, who in just hours away would become their Passover lamb and provide eternal redemption for them, not just a redemption that was fleeting, that had to be done over and over again as they would kill these lambs, uh, but they were celebrating with the lamb. What an amazing thing um, that they probably hadn't or weren't even thinking about. Of course, we have hindsight and we look back and see the lamb sitting there with them, the lamb. But something happened at this Passover that was really uncommon. And I wanna read verse four through 15. So just read along with me. Um, in chapter 13, verse four, it says, Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not every one of them was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So Jesus takes this very intimate time and he does something for them that uh, was uncommon to be done at Passover. But you know, here he is before his death. And I think that before someone dies, if they have opportunity, their words are going to hold a lot of weight. They're gonna really speak what is of utmost importance because they know these are some of the last words they're going to speak to their friends or their loved ones. 
And so Jesus is taking this time. So I think what he's doing here is so important because he knows his time with them is short. And what is he doing? He is teaching them humility and loving one another and serving one another and not being first. There were several times prior to this when the disciples would ask him, who's first? Who's going to be first in the kingdom? Who's going to sit next to you? And Jesus is showing them here. They are to take on the position of a servant, to be humble with each other. Why? Because I believe of what is ahead for these disciples, because of the ministry they are going to have that they have no idea of. And if you look ahead to verse 34, it gives a little inkling of what they're um, being equipped to do. In verse 34, Jesus says to them, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And then verse 35, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Ladies, that is going to be the hallmark of their ministry. People will be attracted to Jesus because of their love for one another. What does that say about us? Our love for one another should be paramount in our relationships with each other. We should, we should put low those things that don't matter. There's so much that doesn't matter, right? But wow, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples. You can talk Jesus all you want. You can talk Bible verses. You can do great things. But if we don't have love for each other and care about one another, especially in these days, then the unbelieving world isn't going to care. They're not going to see who Jesus is through us. I love that. All men will know, all men will know that you are my disciples. And then next we see that Jesus addresses two men in this passage, in this chapter. Who are these two men? Judas and Peter. And I've really never linked them together before until I studied this time. I'm going to read verse 21 through 27. So follow along if you'd like to. And after he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Verily, truly, I say to you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon, Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. There's so much packed into that little phrase in verse 21. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit. We saw just a few chapters back that Jesus was so overcome with grief about Lazarus that he outwardly wept. But this verse gives us a little bit of an inkling of what was happening inside of Jesus. He was troubled in spirit. And he said, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. But to see the anguish, to hear about the anguish in his spirit is, is heartbreaking to me. I think it's one of the saddest verses. 
And what did the disciples do when he said this? In verse 22, his disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. Can you imagine the awkward moment that followed that statement? They sat there and just stared at one another. I'm sure all the things going through their minds of, oh, he said this and he did this. It might be him. It might be him. Uh, I'm sure it was just a very, very awkward moment of silence when they were just staring at each other, wondering who it was. And then they find uh, later that it was Judas. But then there was another man, another disciple, who also chose to turn his back on Jesus. Um, in verse 36, it says this, Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Peter said he would give his life. You know, at this time, they did not have the Holy Spirit present with them all the time like they would later on. Um, and later on, Peter would give his life willingly as a martyr. But right now, he's promising things to Jesus that he cannot keep. But what a heavy burden for Jesus. No wonder he, it says that his spirit was troubled within him. Two of his followers were going to turn their back on him. But one will repent. One will return to Jesus. One will be a strong follower of Christ. Well, in closing... I just want you to notice back in verse 30. Look back in verse 30. It says, as soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out. And these next four words speak volumes about this time. The next four words are this, and it was night. Oh, ladies, it was night. It, it, these were dark, dark days. And I think right now, we're sort of living in the night, you might say. But ladies, we know that there is a day of glory coming, there is a day of light coming, there's a day of redemption and salvation and hope and a glorious future. And ladies, um, that's coming too for us. In the next chapter 14, on the heels of this duration of night, where the disciples, a couple of them, were turning their backs on Jesus. Um, in the next chapter, chapter 14, you know what Jesus does? He speaks comfort to them. When it's night in our souls, God speaks comfort to us. So next time, ladies, John chapter 14, can't wait to hear Jesus' words of comfort. I'll see you then.